Snow! Sparkles! Santa caught the fridge! <laughs> it's the Real Raw Rhymes Christmas Special. I don't know. What do you call an elf who won't share? Elfish! <laughs> well, funny you should mention it, because being selfish at Christmas time is what today's We Are Rhyme is all about. Do you want to hear it? Sure! Well, come on in then! As I grimly sat, with trouble brewing up in my mind. I was angrily thinking about my little sister. My thoughts were jealous and unkind. Goodbye. My problem with she was Santa's present, you see. She had asked for a cool new bike. And that would mean that her bike was better than mine. This I really did not like. My bratty little sister with a bike better than me? It was a travesty! It was so unfair! She'd be smug and she'd glow and she'd boast all day long! And this I simply could not bear! There was nothing else for it. Drastic times, drastic measures. I can't let this happen without a fight! I'm sorry sis, but there'll be no bike for you! No bike for you! Santa cannot be let visit this night! <laughs> But Santa is wily Hello. and ingeniously magic. Up his sleeve are many tricks to be played. Hello. I'll have to be crafty to disturb his visit. I must hurry! Many preparations must be made! Okay, Rudolph, let's look at the list. Who's due a visit from Santa Claus? Ah, oh, yes, dear boy, it's the Lafferty Girls. That roof over there now, click your paws. Now, let me see. Ah, yes, a brand new bike. Coloured red, wheel shiny and round. I'll pop that in my sack and I'll be back in a jiffy. Wait, hold on a second. What's that sound? Hmm? Down below in the house, I'd heard a big bump. The arrival of the jolly fat man. Hello. I whisper to the glow of the fire. It's time to unleash my plan. <laughs> For hidden in the dark was a network of pipes. From our chimney, they snake right to a big slurry tank in the farmer's fields. That's liquid cow food to me and to you. I couldn't resist. I tackled the mess. <laughs> As I turned and wheeled that pipe crank. I knew it was bad. I knew it was bold. But still, what a magnificent <laughs> prank. Up on the roof, the reindeer shrugged at Santa, hmm? who climbed in the chimney pot. He began lowering himself down, then sprang right out, as if he'd been scalded by something hot. Run, my lads, run, bellowed the Christmas man. The chimney is about to blow. Then whoosh, a fountain of brown goo erupted from the chimney, like lava from a volcano. Poor Santa was launched like a Yuletide missile. Away through the night he flew. Well, a Yuletide missile with a hat and a beard who smelled a bit like cow poo. I've nearly got drowned in that smelly explosion, grumbled Santa as he climbed back in the sled. I'm not climbing down that chimney again. Let's go try the door instead. In a magical flash, they appeared at the door. Which Santa gave a few knocks. Go away, fat man! You've no business here! 
I ordered from the letter box. Ah, oh, hello there, Aoife. I see you're awake. Please excuse the smell of slurry. Now be a good girl and open the door. I'm afraid we're in quite a hurry. Santa, old friend, I'm not to be chuffed to see you visiting here. But Maeve cannot get a better bite than me, so you're not allowed in this year. But Aoife, gasped yes, Santa, how awful of you. That's not what Christmas is all about. It's about sharing and caring with the ones you love. Of that, there is no doubt. Save it, Santa. I've run it all before. Maeve isn't getting that bite. And just before I snapped that letter box shut, I said, Go on, get it off, take a hike. Outrageous, of Santa. This Lafferty girl, how dare she issue that threat? I shall not let her ruin Christmas for all. If it's what she wants, it's what she gets. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. I shouldn't have made Santa so vexed. But I had Outside in the night, not a creature was stirring, not a peep from neither mouse nor bird. And thus it was strange that the bushes were rustling and that coarse whispers from them could be heard. All set boys, are you ready? The bushes did murmur. We go on the count of three. Then a stream of twinkling lights rose up from the bushes, right through our window and surrounded our tree. The lights, they danced and played a while. Then pop! Santa appeared, complete with his reindeer Hello. and his magic toy sack. And of course, his jolly red beard. <laughs> the old sparkle shuffle, Santa chuckled. So much easier than a chimney climb. One of my more sneakier moves. I've really fooled you for this time. Not so fast! I roar, springing from behind the couch. Fooled me? That's why you think. Santa glanced down at my silver skates and observed, Why? Whatever for? Your mom will go mad. You've ruined her carpet. Wait, what's that smeared all over the floor? Oh, uh, just a bag of marbles. I reply with a grin. A bottle of oil and of course some moisturizing cream. And oh yes, a tub of Dad's special car wax, which I've polished up to a game. It's a game I play. I inform the boys. It really makes the floor quite zippy. So if I was you, I'd watch where I tread, because that floor is horrendously zippy. She's right then. Rudolph hissed in a cautious whisper. If you need to move, make it slow. No thanks and don't sneeze! He simply screamed, hey, don't do it! Oh, no! But neither man nor beast can halt reindeer gas, and Vixen couldn't keep in that sneeze. Choo! And the force of his nasal explosion sent everyone flying straight into poor Santa's ugly knees. They flopped on the floor like lion caught fish. They spun round like fairground teacups. And I took my chance as they flailed about to hurt the whole lot of them up. I grabbed my ice hockey stick and I got to work. Like pucks, I pushed them along the floor, straight into the massive rubber catapult sling that I had tied onto the door. Santa dear boy, it pains me to do this. I admitted as I drew that rubber sling back. But you're used to flying. Skip me grand, so you will. Then I let fly that rubber slack. Whoosh! Flew the reindeer and Santa Claus. They were fire right out of the window. My plan had worked so I smirked and quit. <laughs> Hurtling through the night at breakneck pace, Santa turned to face his crew. Perhaps we may have underestimated this Lafferty girl. It's time to tighten the screw. I knew I hadn't seen the last of Claus, and that more plans he would invent. And so it came as no surprise at all, when eventually the doorbell went. I cautiously cracked open the door a little and saw that no one was there except for a little adorable furry squash-nosed teddy bear. Aww. And in her little paw she tightly gripped what looked like a written note. Dear Aoife, you win. No bike for Maeve. 
Merry Christmas, Santa had wrote. Hello. Well, I wasn't sure if I trusted Santa or if a lie I was being told. But I couldn't leave poor Teddy out here, all alone out here in the cold. So I scooped her up and I brought her inside and I put her down right beside the fireplace. Then I ran upstairs to look out the window to check for Santa just in case. But I saw no sign, so I thought to myself, I better go check on the bear. But the huh? sight that met me in the living room made my jaw drop and my eyes bulge and stare. Colorful lights were streaming from Ted's ears and were dancing all around the walls. They shimmered and gleamed as they skipped and hopped. And then pop appeared Santa Claus. Hello. Santa, you sneak. You use poor Teddy as a new to a Trojan horse. You leave me no choice. I'm going to use this mop to remove you now by force. Hell yeah. Scatter boys run, yelled Santa as I chased after him with my broom. But Santa was fast and so were the reindeer and the chase went from room to room, from couch to bath and hall to sink. I pursued them all over the house until they raced down the stairs and I lost the scent as the house fell as quiet. <laughs> Softly I prowled through the Christmas scene until I heard a slight sound, just a smidge. It seemed to be coming from the kitchen top, and more specifically, from the fridge. I crept up to the fridge, and tore open the door, and saw that the inside was jam-packed, with Santa, who was stuffing mince pies in his mouth, and the reindeer munching carrots in the back. I slammed the door shut, and I held it tight, while I dug in my pockets for some tape which I wrapped a hundred times all around the fridge so that there would be no escape. Quickly I ran to fetch a wheelbarrow and I managed to lever the fridge in. Then I rolled it outside and with all of my might I dumped it into our wheelie bin. I pushed the bin to the edge of the cliffs then I tipped it right into the sea. It would take Santa ages to escape from that. You wouldn't soon be back bothering me. Down in the fridge as it sailed away, Santa announced, We need a new plan. And all of the reindeer Hello. heartily agreed as they all chopped <laughs> by a gingerbread man. Back in the house, I have to say, I was feeling pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Santa was gone and there was no bike for me. I was grinning like an elf on a shelf. But as I kicked back with a hot mug of tea, I heard a soft sound on the wind. The faintest of ruffles, a sigh in the night, the flap of a bat's leather wing. I sighed to myself <sighs> as I put my mug down. I guess that's the end of my fun. It would appear to me that I'm no longer alone. My but dance with Santa was not done. said Rudolph to Santa. How do we pass her guard? We do it, boomed Santa with a twinkle in his eye, through the jolly old Christmas card. You see, my lads, the Christmas card is like a secret portal for me and for you. For whatever room it is that the card is in, is a room that we can travel into. <laughs> so all we do is spring through the card, then leave Meg's butt down by the tree. Then eat our mince pies and our carrots, of course, and then away from the house we flee. Really? exclaimed Rudolph. As easy as that? Well, come on, everyone. Let's start! So they all bailed in to Santa's toy sack and disappeared in a magical green flash. I smirked as I saw the Christmas cards begin to rattle. You see, I had taken them off the mantelpiece and moved them to a more lively spot. Poor Santa would know no peace. There was a crackle of sparkles as the cards burst open, and in a twinkle, Santa appeared. But as he glanced around and saw where he was, he gulped oh, and croaked, Oh dear. Because we have four dogs to guard our house, and I wouldn't describe them as being gentle. So just in case Santa tried his Christmas card trick, No need for alarm, it's me, Santa Claus, you see. But
but the pack of dogs were in no mood for strangers and they weren't going to listen to his plea. They lunged at Santa and snapping jaws, but Santa and the reindeer weren't done. They crashed through the door as fast as they could, but the doggies trying to bite their bum. I watched from the window the race unfold, nipping on a licorice treat. And I have to admit, I laughed a little as Santa being chased up the street. A little while later, the dogs returned. And I was starting to yawn. I was tired and hoping Santa would give up soon when I saw a golden glow outside on our lawn. I rushed outside to find Santa and Rudolph. With a look of resignation on their face. Okay, fine, Aoife. We've had enough. You win. We're tired of this silly race. We haven't got time to hang around, so you can have it the way you like. We give up no more. We've other presents to bring. We won't deliver Maeve her bike. Then they hopped in their sleigh, and with a crack of the reins, they launched and flew away. I closed the front door and I climbed up the stairs, feeling pretty pleased, I have to say. Okay. I entered our bedroom and crept across the carpet, passing my sister, who soundly slept. Noticing how she'd arranged all my teddies on my bed, just how I liked them kept. She's always doing little bits like that. She really can't be ever so sweet. Like that time when I was bold and I got sent to my room and she smuggled me up toast to eat. Or that other time when I broke my leg and I couldn't go outside to play. So she made me up a fun box to use with paints and glue and colours and stickers and clay. I climbed into bed and reminded myself. I mean, no bye for me tomorrow. But then the nice memories of me filled my head. And my eyes suddenly watered in sorrow. This old toy was being so nasty. It was true what Santa had said. I had been awfully selfish and mean. I realized as my heart filled with dread. All she ever wanted was a big bike to ride. But now her dream was screeched to a halt. I had stopped Santa from delivering her gift. She'd be so sad. It's all my fault. I lay awake worrying about the morning until eventually I drifted to dream, not noticing outside the twinkling sparkles pouring down our chimney like a sparkling stream. Yeah, wake up! It's Christmas morning! Blurted Maeve as she shook me awake. Her eyes were gleaming. She was so excited. Oh, this is too much for my poor conscience to take. I followed her slowly as she raced down the stairs. I miserably thought. So as you can imagine, I got quite a surprise when she roared, Eva, look what Santa brought! Huh? I peeked around the door, my eyes saucer wise, at the sight that lay before me. Because a great big present all wrapped up in a bow was sitting in front of our tree. Would you look at Eva? Oh shiny and bright! Is it a bike? Oh what is I reply in dumbfounded surprise. Are you certain? Do you mind? Can I see? Why sure? My sister beamed in reply as she passed the note over to me. Dear Aoife and Maeve, the note began, a present for the Lafferty girls. For Aoife, who gets it wrong sometimes, and for Maeve with her bouncing curls. A special surprise from Santa Claus to bring hours of joyful play. And a little reminder from your jolly old pal about the true meaning of Christmas Day. What does that mean? I wondered out loud as wrapping paper flew all over the place. And when Maeve had finished and I saw the gift, huh? the confusion was written all over my face. It was a bike, all right, all shiny and red, with a big shiny bell coloured blue. But right in the middle of the crossbar sat not one passenger saddle, but two! 
squealed Maeve. It's a tandem bike! It's made for two people to ride! All Tinkerbell and the Avengers will have when we bang our bike outside! But Maeve... I reply. Are you not obsessed? You wanted a bike of your own? burst with the guilt I felt when I remembered what I tried to do. And now, to see how happy she was to share, I've been wrong. And this I now knew. I blinked back the tears and I made a solemn promise. To the spirit of Christmas, I must always be true. And then I grabbed my little sister's hand and I held it in mine. And I said to her, Me, I love you. Aww. Merry Christmas, Eva. Too. replied my gentle sister to me. Now come on, let's go! There's no time to waste! Let's go play on our bike now! Whee! We spent all morning playing together. Around the roads we whizzed and we shot. Not noticing at all the jolly red figure who peeked out at us from behind the chimney pot. Hello. Do you know Rudolph? I think she's got it. I think Aoife understands at last. She's realized that Christmas is supposed to bring us together. Sure, look down there. They're having a blast. <laughs> I don't think we'll have any more trouble for her. So finally, our work here is done. Come on, Rudolph. Let's get home and get in front of the fire. Merry Christmas, everyone. Here we go. Yeah, you're right. You better get back to making the toys. And listen, elves, don't forget what Christmas is all about. I know what you elves are like, and I don't want to hear about anyone being selfish this year, okay? Oh, by the way. Yeah? Do you know the way Santa knows everything? Yeah. Well, he told us that that selfish child in the story wasn't Aoife. No, who was it then? It was you. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe!